Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. Today we're in a good old fashioned East meets West hand tool shootout between a Japanese dozuki saw and a Western back saw. I'm building a big project with a lot of dovetails. It's a huge casework. And I want to take the opportunity to really get to know these two dovetail saws a lot better. I've used them for a long time, uh, and both these things are ubiquitous. This is the Z-Saw Dazuki from uh, Z-Saw, apparently. You can check it out on Amazon, the link's below. And uh, this is the uh, ever-popular Veritas uh, dovetail saw. First, I'll give you a brief overview of some of the facts about these types of saws. So the main difference between a Western and a Japanese back saw is going to be the way in which the teeth cut. A Japanese saw, as most Japanese tool do, work by the principle of keeping the steel always under tension. So think about a sheet of paper. If you're pushing a sheet of paper against each other, it's not gonna have very much strength. Whereas if you're pulling it, it's gonna keep its rigidity and keep its strength a lot better. So by that nature, the Japanese pull saws keep the blade under tension. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot to you since uh, Western back saws have the, uh, the ridge on the back and usually use the thicker steel plate, but the Japanese saw does allow you to get a lot thinner kerf by using a lot thinner steel because since you're not pushing into the wood all the time, rather pulling it, it keeps that steel under tension. They also have, at least most of the saws you're gonna find within a reasonable price range, are gonna be a machine hardened steel, is I think what they call it, um, where it's not really user sharpenable. I mean, you could, I guess, if you had a diamond wheel or carbide, but it's not really practical. So with the Japanese saws that you're gonna find at most woodworking shops um, or on Amazon, they're actually gonna require a replacement blade when they do get dull. Now, the nice thing with the Western saw is that all of these are going to be sharpenable, at least all the ones that are of any decent quality. So this Veritas one and anything from the Lee Valley website, um, any of the saws that you'll see out there from some of the really cool guys like uh, Bearcat Woodworking um, or uh, uh, Bad Axe saws, um, all those saws are gonna be user sharpenable. Um, there's some really cool uh, sharpening videos over on Bearcat's channel. I'll link to that below too. So both of these saws have a pedigree that's really unchallengeable. The Japanese have been using Japanese style Ryobas and Dozukis for a long time. And the Western back saw has been everywhere from Europe to the United States, Canada. These are very common saws and you'll see them of all vintages all over the country and likely you'll be able to find one wherever you live too. So this is a fairly minor point and it can be corrected with practice, but I tend to find that the Dazuki starts a lot easier on any cut than a western back saw. The pull motion of the cut is just really natural for getting a cut started. Even with a western saw, you tend to start your motion with a, a back cut. With practice and confidence, you get faster at either version though not that big of a deal. Now there's one problem that's unavoidable with a western back saw, and that's tear out. There's the tear out from a western back saw, and here's that same end from a Japanese saw. On the other end where you would expect the tear out, there is a little, but barely noticeable at all. Now we can look at the finished faces right off the saw. A dovetail cut is somewhere between a rip cut and a cross cut, so dovetail saws have a particular grind on them. There's the cut from the Veritas saw, and there's the one from the Dazuki, a little bit smoother. We can also look at cutting shoulders, which is more of a straight cross cut. Here's the cut from the Veritas, and here's the cross cut from the Dazuki. A little bit rougher. The Veritas does a really nice job on cross cuts. Another key benefit of the Japanese Dazuki is the almost infinite hand positions. Now, it's not quite like a, I think they call it a gentleman saw where it has a round handle. Um, it is repeatable. It does generally have an oblong handle that has a natural position for your hand. But along the length of the handle, there's a million different places to grab it and a million different ways you can grab it depending on the type of cut you're trying to make. 
that's both a blessing and a curse. On the Western backsaw, it's generally just one hand position. Now it is a pistol grip, either closed or open. In this case, in the Veritas saw, it's open, but your hand just finds a nice comfortable place to go. You can adjust the uh, verticality of the blade or the, the squareness of the blade to the cut by pinching a little bit with your pinky to move the blade to the left or pinching a little bit with your middle finger to move the blade to the right. Uh, and all these handles have a really comfortable, natural sort of balance point that makes it really easy to just get into a natural cutting motion. The Dozuki does that too, but the Western hands, the Western backsaw really just locks your hand into that perfect position and it just feels almost natural, like robotic, to get into that good cutting motion. If you're in this entry level price range, I guess I shouldn't say entry level, but I guess if you're in this sort of like enthusiast price range of a backsaw, uh, the one piece to look at is going to probably be durability. So with these, the, the key difference is going to be the sharpenability and the, the ability to restore um, these Western backsaws. You can find these at flea markets, at garage sales, anywhere, and they can be de-rusted and sharpened and ready to go. That's one of the disadvantages of the Dozuki. I've had this one for probably about two years now and I've been using the same blade. And you can see, uh, I've actually managed to break off some of the teeth. There's still plenty of teeth to get a nice clean cut, but it's not in perfect shape. And the disadvantage of these is if you do find one of them that has some of the, too many teeth broken off, you'll just have to buy another blade. And should the company, in this case Z-Saw, go out of business, those blades may not be available anymore. Between the two, there's not much to it. They both have strengths and weaknesses. But let's put them through a little bit of a stress test. I've got here a sandwich of Osage Orange, Sycamore, and Cherry to kind of have a range from a softish hardwood to a hardwood to a very hardwood with Osage Orange. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, so let's give it a try. That's the Dozuki. That's the Veritas saw. It felt like the Dozuki was going through there easier, but the, the cut wasn't quite as smooth. Let's take a look at the cherry. Well, the cherry sycamore beast monster. Another benefit of a Dozuki, it's got this little spot out in the front where you can cut as deep as you want. Well, almost, but you know what I mean. Except for that last little inch is the finish off of the Veritas saw. Again, very smooth, both in the, both in the cross cut and the rip. Great for dovetails, great for what it's made for. Let's flip this over and uh, try the Dozuki. results off the Dozuki. It struggled a little bit between the softwood and the hardwood with the uh, rip cut, 
but man, the uh, cross cut's smooth. And that's, I think that's how it's grind intentionally. But when you're using it for dovetails, you're gonna do a little bit of both. So I guess there's uh, two pretty nice saws. At the end of the day, as far as value, I think the Veritas wins out a little bit in the end. Uh, mainly just because since it's sharpenable, it'll last you forever. The Dozuki though is a very versatile, useful tool to have around. Uh, it works well as a nice flush saw. I prefer it to Western saws for cutting angles and weird joinery. At the end of the day, it's really not about the tools you use though, it's about what you make with them. So take it all with a grain of salt. Thanks for joining me today with Woodwork Life. And uh, please uh, take a second to check out one of these videos here. I'm sure you'll like one of them. And also consider subscribing if you like my channel and want to see more content like this. Thanks for joining me today. And remember to keep your tools sharp and keep your mind even sharper. Have a good one.